right, so where we left off um, on our last video was dyeing up some paper to create um, an envelope. It's kind of custom colors to kind of go with the butterfly uh, papers that I selected for the journal. And this is where it ended up. Um, so I actually off camera did find some wax paper that I put the gesso on, you know, I crunched it ahead of time and then kind of, you know, pressed it on to kind of get some random um, gessoed spots on here. And then I did spritz just a little bit more pink just to kind of even that color out a little bit. I used um, this one here, which is taffy. I really like this taffy. It's very light pink. I really like that one. So that's where we ended up. And then today, um, what we'll do is finish kind of some of the background on it. So I like to do do want to do stamping now just to, for the random effect. And then we'll cut the sheet down. And then we'll use the um, envelope tool from, what's the name of this? Constantly forget. <sighs> this envelope punch board from We Are Memory Keepers. We'll use that to uh, create the envelope shape. And then we'll finish decorating it with maybe a couple of these stickers, maybe some tissue paper or um, napkins. We'll kind of see. So we'll set that to the side. So I do want to random stamp um, the background here. Nothing too dark. And I think based on the papers, so just kind of as a reminder, here's the, here's one of the papers. And some of this background color is a little bit more in the gray um, or taupey color. And I don't really have taupe, um, but I do have couple grays. I got this stone gray and I've got the dove gray. Now the dove gray is brand new so I'm not totally certain how accurate it is to what's on the front here. So I'm going to do a little test stamp off real quick before I select the color and then we'll move forward with that background. Sorry. I need to get a test piece of paper here just so we can see. So This one is the Dove Gray. This is interesting. This pad is, the uh, felt that's in here is really ready to fall right off the base here. All right, let's see. Definitely soft. I like it. That one might be too soft, but we'll see here in just a second. It's fairly close to the cover. And then we've got, oh, that's very dark. Yeah, that's nearly black. So we will stick with the dove gray just because I don't want it to be too overwhelming. Pop that into my cart. All right, that's good. So I do love, 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 love this stamp here, this script stamp. Um, I like things that I actually can't read what it says. So I don't get distracted by whatever's um, on the page. I wanna, don't want my eyes like focused on like a word, especially if it's a weird word. <laughs> so I do like um, this particular stamp. It came on a wood block. You can see the back is still kind of sticky and has gathered up some various uh, strings here, but um, it came out of wood block, but I just felt like I couldn't, you know, just one giant block was difficult to manipulate. So I did take it off the block. I did get rid of the block. I, I don't know, it could be around here somewhere, but I don't think so. But I did pick this up um, from, I believe it was Hobby Lobby, um, a, the script stamp on a block. So uh, this is what I'm gonna use. And typically I just hold it like this ink it up. I'm actually going to test one more time on here just to make sure. Yeah, perfect. Got enough ink going on. And then I can randomly um, put my script in the background. I 
going to focus mainly, um, this is going to get cut down a bit, so I'm going to focus, which one's my favorite side? I think I'm going to focus on maybe this part here, because I'm going to have to cut part of this down. I'll save the other bit, you never know what I could use it for. Um, add more so there we go I think that's good watch one more just a little darker right there there we go okay I think that's good for that one and then I'm gonna try oops didn't need to cover that I meant to move this over here my drawer Clean that later. I'm gonna add a little bit of this one. This is just like a random stamp that I got in um, my subscription from our atelier. Um, so I'm just gonna add a couple of these just here and there. Don't usually use these type stamps. Um, so I'm just not used to it, but I figured Time to experiment a little bit, lady. So, maybe one more. Oh, not dark enough. There we go. Good. I think that's good. All right. So now that we've got the inking and the stamping done, we can cut this to the appropriate size. We'll grab the punch back out and so my particular envelope is five by seven. So depending on the envelope that you're working on, um, do keep that in mind for the size card that you want. Um, I'm thinking of four by six. That gives me half an inch either way um, for that. So this is telling me I need an eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Um, so I'm gonna cut that down really quickly believe this is an eight and a half by 11 paper, but I did pull it out of um, and it, inking it does kind of shrink it maybe a tiny bit, but I think it's big enough. So give me just a quick sec and I will be right back. All right, so we've got the paper cut down and now we are going to follow the directions here, which is basically um, telling us, where did that go? That the score line is gonna be at three and Three eighths. Man, this is hard to read. Good golly. Thank God it's not in the blue. I really can't read that. Three and three eighths. So basically, you score it first. And let's see. You align the left edge to the score line. And then you punch and score and rotate, punch and score. So three and three eighths. So three. Three eighths is right here. Okay. So we're going to punch. And then here's the score. Now this paper is quite thin, so it's not really laying flat. So I'm just gonna gently, very gently, so I don't bust through here. Give that a little score. And then from there, you lay your score line inside of the punch device in order to make the next punch. And since I'm not heavily scoring this, I'm gonna just fold it a little bit more along that score line so I can get that in there all the way. It's quite difficult to see. In fact, what I'm gonna do with this one, is I'm just gonna go ahead and lay it as scored so that I can get that punch in there properly. All right, so we're going to lay this little point right here in here and punch it. That did not work. One more time. Oh, that's because it's folded. All right, well, at least I've got it where it needs to be. One more time. Here we go. Got it. Better. There we go. There we go. And then, oops, then you have to score it again. 
So difficult to see. So difficult. Okay. Again, being very gentle so you don't break the paper. Oops. Turn it over. It might be easier. I can literally hear the paper crunching. Okay, so I'm going to pull this again just to try to make it easier to see that line. It's a little easier to see. Put that on there. Punch. Again, score it. The long edge. All right. There we go. Fold that a little bit. Yeah, that using the Thinner paper definitely is can be challenging, but I like the way it looks. Okay, got that all punched out. Put that up. And now we've got our envelope and we can fold it and we'll have our finished envelope. All right, so here's your top and bottom and your sides. Mine might be a little tiny bit off because it was difficult to see, but that's okay. Could just change the fold slightly and get it inside. All right. Yeah, I think it's off a bit, but that's okay. This will go on the inside. That folds off just. Slightly, there we go. Now on mine, I go on mine. I like to take this. So when you get your envelope off these punch boards, you do end up with this piece that's hanging out. And I do like to um, cut mine off. So generally, what I will do is fold it about where I want it, cut off, and then. Either fold it in and glue it, or um, you can um, cut it. So, go. And adjust this slightly. Go. Okay, so I think I'm going to, just because it's so thin, I think I'm going to go ahead and just cut mine. Off. I want to measure it one more time, make sure it's where I want it. Yeah. All right, and then this paper tears quite easily, so I'm just going to put, cut it by hand. All right, there we go, and then. From here, since everything's already pre-stamped, it's very random at that point. Um, and I didn't worry about, you know, what direction things were facing because at this point it's just, you know, really background. But from here, we can decide what kind of decorations we want, whether it's floral, floral and a butterfly, butterfly and trim. I probably won't put trim on this particular one in this particular journal just because um, it gets bulky too fast for the style of journal that it is um, and I really don't want it to gator mouth so I am going to stick with very small decorations, very simple decorations and not put a bunch of trim and other items that create, you know, make it too bulky. Um, but I do have some um, other options beside the two stickers that just came in. I have several different um, sheets. This is actually just tissue paper in floral themes. Um, and I cannot remember off the top of my head the name of the place that I got this from, but I know it's stored 
on my computer. So I will um, grab that URL and put that in the link of where I got this as well as a couple other items. So um, lots of floral to choose from here. Kind of dig in potentially this sheet. space so maybe not but it's still in the ready I also have some rice paper um, or washi papers what they're calling this but it's a rice paper um, that would also potentially work well the only thing I don't like is it doesn't have a white background and I'm thinking that this is going to overwhelm that brown background's gonna overwhelm this. So we'll put that one as a no. And then I have a couple different um, napkins. So the large napkins here I got from the same place that I got the tissue paper from. And the smaller ones are from Ho uh, Hobby Lobby, Tuesday morning. So this one also has some pretty roses on it. This rose here is quite pretty. Or this one. Get some script maybe, or maybe just around that. It's pretty. Now these don't come with the two extra plies taken off. I did just pre-remove them. Okay, this one's a little too purpley, so we'll just skip past that one. This one's another one I grabbed. And I think this one's just a little too purpley, so we'll ignore that one. And then this one does have like a little blue butterfly on it. As well as a little bird that could be super cute. They don't have to necessarily go in this, you know, setup. We can just cut these pieces out and put them together the way we want. Um, but I do like that white background. It does have some additional script on it. So I like that. That's potential. That looks good. And this one had a blue butterfly as well. I could just cut that out. It's a little maybe too simplistic, but I might use it elsewhere. So hold on to that one. Kind of thinking I like this one. Gives me two elements. I could do a couple extra script stamps um, to fill in some of the gaps. I do want it to be somewhat simple. Um, I'll stick a piece of paper in here. Um, it can be just like a private journaling spot um, or to store whatever you know you want to store in there. So for instance, I might have things that I don't necessarily want to tear apart and glue into my journal, but I still want to keep it. So I will stick things like that inside the envelopes or tuck spots of my journal. So I think we'll go here and do this one. No nails. I'll see if I can get this off. It's the one thing I don't like about the stickers is trying to get them off the backing. That'll drive a girl insane. There we go. I don't 
don't mind if mine goes off the side because I can trim it. It feels a little bit more natural. All right, now these stickers are a little bit thicker than the last ones that I have used. So it's not blending as cleanly in the background, but it's not bad. Um, if you were using a tea dyed background, you could definitely um, um, you know, ink over it a little bit, the background paper. Um, but since I have multiple colors, that doesn't really um, lend well for what I'm trying to do. because that definitely will give it an outline. So hopefully just by burnishing it a little bit, I can really get that paper to adhere and blend into the background. It's working pretty well in most spots. There's a couple that it's not as transparent, but overall, not bad, not bad at all. Okay. Trim that a little bit off the side there. Okay. Whoopsie. Then we'll do our butterfly. Hopefully it won't take me five minutes to get off the backing paper. started I just don't want to bend it or fold it over on itself there we go all right I think I'm gonna leave it down here Okay, I'm just going to burnish along the edges, get that to blend in as much as possible. So coming up here where it got on a little thicker so may have to either pick that off or glue it down at some point here but let's see if I can just get it to maybe chip off on its own I don't know if you can see that that's just the gesso uh huh yeah like it a little bit more here not quite as blended but that's okay all right so I do have plenty of stamps. I know it's kind of a popular thing right now, which is to actually put the stamps with the um, postage cancellation. I don't think I have a postage can cancellation stamp. It's kind of been one of those things I've been thinking about getting, but just haven't done yet. Um, so I may end up doing that, but for now I think what I'll do is go ahead and just do a little bit more um, stamping from the script stamp and um, consider doing that other using a canceled stamp later you might do that happy with that at least for now all right so one piece of ephemera to go I mean down not to go lots to go one down and let's move on to the next bit move all my papers out of the way that I want to do is I would like to have a corner pocket kind of like this and just need to pull out the journal see how wide it is I 
make sure I'm not making this sucker too wide. Yep, so that will work pretty good just to kind of tear maybe right underneath that rose all the way down. I have to cut some of it, but I think that will work. And then I'm gonna back it just on some um, cards, well, if you use card stock, I just have this, uh, I have lots of like, net ones and whatnot. So I'm just gonna use this as the backer, just stain around it a little bit. Um, and I think that would work just fine. So. tear the basic shape for now just get us where we need to be and I can give it a little bit more of the shape that I want once we've got that Oops, sorry butterfly all right a little easier to tear once you get it closer to the size I think that's basically a good um, shape. I'm going to glue it onto um, the backer before I tear that shape just to make sure that um, I don't make it too small or too big and have to trim around it. So just need to cut this down and then we'll glue it and then tear around that. Sorry, I do need to pick up in order to see my blind eyes. I gotta get this kind of close. <laughs> See what I meant, what I'm doing here. All right. I wanna measure it one more time. Make sure it's gonna fit well on the page. Get a little bit edging of the background. Yep, I think that worked just fine. I'm going to go ahead and ink this up just a little bit to offset it. So I did use, sorry, I'm going to dig all this out. So I try to keep it neat and tidy, which IE just means can't find anything on my desk. Um, so I did use the faded jeans with a little bit of the lilac. Let's see if I can just get away with the faded jeans. So just to kind of, nothing much, just offset it a little bit. Make sure it's got a defined edge as well as take off any white that I didn't quite cut to the edge of, the side of the paper. All right. That's good. All right, I'm just gonna tear this. a little bit of the uh, backing all the way around. So I'm going to kind of glue it like this and then when it dries we'll cut these square and this will be torn. So the reason this has one on each side is I accidentally had my printer set to collate because I try not to use too much paper and didn't even think about it when I was printing this out and first batch got ruined so I'm just using it for my deco. Okay. 
just give that a second to cure on there. kind of do the same thing which is randomly tear around the edge and this way my pocket has got plenty of strength but yet it can be decorated as well Got a little too close to the edge in a couple places, but that is okay. Just trim this up a little bit. In the big spots. I'm gonna do this on the glass. Ink those up slightly. Just a little bit more. Let's give the edge a little tiny edge. Oh, this is some tough uh, folder, I'll tell you. There we go. just a tiny bit of the shaded lilac just to put just a little bit of that purple color in there. I'm just going to use the same same one. Just changes the color just enough to match a little bit better with the blue of the butterfly. Here I'm going to just do a, because this is where my machine was acting up, so I think I'm going to put a, um, a vertical pocket there, um, and I am going to put a vertical pocket here. So I'm thinking... Thinking, I like it here. Not enough butterflies in this in this view here, so we'll glue that down here, um, and that'll be a nice little pocket for some ephemera. This glue, I'll tell you. All right, I'm gonna actually go with my newer one. So my newer glue, I left. I left the um, seal on, I just poked a hole in it. So I'm hoping that this is actually gonna work better for me and it won't end up constantly erupting. <laughs> so just glue the two sides.
like it. I'm also going to be using some of the sheet that I'm not using for the outside. So I kind of decided to go with the light blue parchment looking paper for the outside just to kind of keep it more consistent. Once you open it, it's not such a shock of color. Um, so that is what I'm going to do on that. But I do need to create um, the pocket here. Let's see the other sheets here. I think I want to do that with this sheet here and with these kind of like right about there. So I'm going to trim this really quick um, off camera just so I can get a nice even straight cut because I am not the handiest trimmer by hand manually and that will cover up kind of my boo-boos and yet give me a pink pocket and the same thing. I'm just going to glue it onto, um, um, I'm going to glue it onto cardstock or in this case the file folder just to kind of give my pocket a little bit of strength. Um, and I think also I'm going to put some of the side tabs on just to give it a little bit more, um, room in this in this pocket so it's not so tight to the page i don't mind necessarily smaller pockets um or even this type of pocket tends to have a lot more give given the fact that it's going across like this but the ones for some reason that you go across the whole page in a straight line don't seem to have much give and you, it feels like you're fighting to put stuff in there so give me one second i'll be right back Got that cut down. I'll trim that here in a bit. Yeah, that'll be nice. And I can put, yeah, that'll work just fine. Put a little thumb hole there here in just a bit. All right, and then that'll give me just enough room to put some, some tabs on give that pocket just a little bit more space. All right. So for this one, I don't think it's as important. I don't think I need to have the edge showing. I don't want that pocket too big. So I think we're just gonna glue it on and cut it edge to edge, trim it down edge to edge and work with it that way. There we go. Squish that down. seepage there. That's okay. We're going to cut that off anyway. All right. All right I'm going to cut 
like that. Be right back. Okay, so I'm also going to ink this up. Around the edges. Give us the little tabs we need to give this a little bit more room. So, pick the paper, which is about seven inches. Actually, hang on a second. Seven and uh, about one. 16th. So that's going to give us so you can see this paper is 7 and 1 16th. So that gives us approximately 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, about 5 sixteenths on each side. Um, might have to adjust it slightly. Um, in fact, I may just cut off one edge by 1 16th so I have an equal number um, on here so that I can just score it equally on both sides instead of... And then I can use Tim Holtz ruler to kind of get the center of that properly. Okay, let's grab the scoreboard. We'll just go for it. Where'd the scoreboard go? Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to score here first. I'm going to make this actually smaller because there's so much decoration that I'll end up removing here. So I think what I'm gonna do here is score it and then adjust everything on the other side and that way I can keep most of this butterfly um, in view. And we don't need a big tab, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and score it right here and then we'll adjust it on the other side. I'm going to score it on both sides just to make sure it doesn't crack. It's quite thick between the paper and the. There we go. All right. Not a huge fan of having to measure everything, but sometimes there's just a not a lot you can do about it. You just kind of have to go with it. Bring out your math skills. All right, so that is about. Two, one sixteenth of that. Let's try it out. I think that should work. And this first mark here, it's like halfway in between, but. Not a fan of this scoreboard because the fact that the edge is not uh, fixed in the corner, so when you butt up against it, it tends to it tends to move. Okay, I'm gonna score one more time on the other side. Works. I need that a little. 
little short, but we'll see. Well, one more in. We'll try one more in here. Might be slightly. I feel like it's like in between the two. All right, we're going for it. We're making our own, making our own rules. I'm going to go in between. Shift it over a little bit. All right. Just not getting this on right mark, guys. it is I don't know the weight I just have some so might be some thin ones out there here we go one more time will this be the winner winner chicken dinner yeah that'll work that's one I kept shifting it so I was getting my measurement off so that looks pretty darn good I think it will work all right so I'm just going to burnish this a bit and then we'll glue down we'll make our thumb hole actually we'll do that opposite we'll thumb hole and then we'll glue down so hopefully this will give me a little bit more room for sticking things in. Again, I like to use my pockets like this, not just for ephemera pieces, but when you're actually using your journal and you're wanting to keep something that you don't necessarily want to fold up or cut down or glue inside of your journal, and you just want to keep it, then you can keep it in a side pocket instead of cutting it apart in order to fit it in there. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. It's pretty burnished. I'm gonna just ink a little bit more right here. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit of the lilac. Bring a little bit more of that purple look in here. And then we'll do the two sides that we folded. All right. Got our <clears throat> hole punch, a two inch punch. I like the larger punches, honestly, um, versus the smaller thumb holes. <clears throat> I just find that, let's see, it's about a little less than the average way, okay. I just find like, the ones that are smaller that has a deeper punch, I just don't like aesthetically. I just don't like that look as much as kind of the more shallow, wider ones. So we gonna put a little tiny mark here just so I can try to get it in the middle, at least as much as possible. <clears throat> About as middle as I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna get. Okay, so there we go. Just a bit up 
just a little bit. Run that in. Now we can glue that down. I definitely think I need the fabric tack for this. This is quite heavy cardstock, so I'll put a good amount on that. Might help if I do it on the uh, on the bottom. That's always a good thing. Okay. We got a little excess there. All right. One more time. Pretty well on the mark, even with all that fumbling. <laughs> okay, burnish that a bit. Try to get some really good contact there, so we don't have any issues later with it lifting. Okay. pretty well do a little yeah that's much better yeah my other journal I put the pocket on it was much tighter and it was very difficult to get things in here so I think that'll work much better all right okay so two pockets down envelope basically completed and I think we'll stop for today as I don't want to make this video too long um, hopefully I'm going to be able to edit this down and make it a little shorter than what it actually is in, in real life. And we will pick up next time with completing a couple additional pockets and I'll probably go ahead off camera and make the other, um, vertical pocket here for this side since we've already done it once. Um, and then we'll just do, um, some additional ephemera pieces and I think on this here we'll do a double a double um, stuffed pocket that you can stick lots of little items in and then this will be the um, side and then I may leave that for the number of pockets etc again we still haven't put our paper in um, and it's gonna increase the size and I don't want it to get gator mouth too much so I uh, hope you guys um, are able to follow along. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And until then, bye.